Aloha mai kako and welcome to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. I'm Ranger Kiyomi. For many years, the park has shared authentic Hawaiian cultural practices in our in-person Ikehana no Eao or Experience the Skillful Work demonstrations. Today, I want to take our native traditions beyond our shores into your living room in hopes that you may find a deeper connection to our culture and inspire you to truly find what makes Hawaii so special. So hele mai, make ready and let's learn together. See, the tini originally came from the Polynesians when they voyaged their way to the Hawaiian Islands. It was found inside of all aspects of Hawaiian culture and everyday life, whether it be from processing food to adornments to even spiritual ceremonies. And it's sacred to the hula goddess, which is laka. This is what we use to put around our wrists for hula. Aloha, I'm Ranger Sean. My name is Cheryl Cabrera. Join me as I learn to make leila'i, which is a form of adornment in hula. Aloha kako, we're here with Cheryl Cabrera here inside of Keokea. And would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Cheryl Cabrera. I'm born and raised in North Kohala. Um, you're at the beautiful Keokea. I actually work with la'i, tea leaf leis and Today you'll be learning um, how to make lea'i that we use for hula. Also for, you know, gatherings, birthdays, funerals, all different occasions. So we're we'll learning a kupe'e style today. What is kupe'e? This is what we use to put around our wrists for hula. Oh. And it represents laka and lono, uh -huh. you know. And then usually when I start feeling all the leaves, the strips in the tea leaf as I vili. For me, it represents our ancestors, our kupuna, and the aina that the la'i came from. Yeah. yeah. How do we start? Like what, from gathering to prepping? So from gathering, we have a tea plant. When you usually gather, we usually ask the aina, we ask the leaf if it's okay, we ask permission, and then you'll cut the leaf on both ends, for me, I like to iron my tea leaf. It has to be soft or else it won't really like how I intertwine all of this together. Yeah. Yeah. You have to iron it. Some people microwave it. Some people put it over the stove, over the gas stove. But I like, I prefer the iron uh -huh. because it comes out nicer and shinier. Yeah. And then now we're going to be able to start. So what I usually do, usually I get this size of leaf. So at the tip of this leaf, what you're going to do, you're going to grab a scissors. What I usually do, I usually trim this side first. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to cut strips. This is the strips that we'll be putting, filling inside the tea leaf. Maybe it'll take about three to four leaves to make one kupe'e. Wow. So we have the, the cut up pieces. We have the cut up pieces. Do you want pieces. Us to cut up some more pieces? I actually prepped some. Oh, you're so nice. <laughs> so what I usually do, I'll grab three. This is the size I use uh -huh. to vili, like the medium, smaller size. Yeah. So what you do, you grab the pointy part. Okay. And you're going to make a knot at the end. Okay, Sean, I will need you to hold. Okay. Then we're going to braid. You're going to braid it to where it's enough to tie at your wrist. 
So what I've learned from my kumu, if you go more than five strips, it's more Tahitian style. Oh. So in hula, we usually put like three or four strips, yeah. which is more our modern way. Yeah. So this today, I'll only put three. So what we're going to do, we're going to put three strips. Okay. You're going to make sure you have two of the leaves on the right side. Okay. And the far back leaf, you're going to bring it over. Okay. And then you're going to bring this up the strip and the one that was on the left side, you're going to video it over. Oh, so I you're see. always going to end up with two on the right and one on the left. Yeah. So as you keep going, you're going to keep adding three more. Just like that. And you're going to just keep on going and doing the same thing. And you're going to lift up and bring the left over. So you always have two on the right. Okay, then we'll have you try. There you go. Okay. So you have two. So two on So usually the... if you're left hand, uh -huh. the two will be on the left and the one will be on the right. Oh, so it goes with your dominant, yes. your dominant hand then? Yes. Okay. So you're going to pinch it in the middle. You can place it however you want. So usually I place it one in the middle, one on the right, and one on the left. All right, here we go. So the one in the far back, okay. which is this one, you're going to twist it. There you go. And you're going to bring it over. Uh huh. Bring it over. You're going to flip the strips up. And the one that was on the left, you're going to bring it over. Yeah. Bring it over like that. Uh huh. Okay. And you're going to pull so it's tight. And then you're going to add three more as you go. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Every halal has a different style. Yeah. But I'm not too sure how their style is. This is our style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our kumu taught us this. So actually, Sean, in the 90s, we had a kumu uh -huh. that moved to North Kohala. Uh -huh. Her name was Kumu Raylin Kavai Aya. With all the halals I danced, I never learned this style until I joined her halal. And that's how I learned how to make lai. Wow. Yeah, kupe'e and lace. Yeah. With her teachings. Mm -hmm. There you go. How should you be thinking, you know, while you're doing it? You should, should actually you... be like in a cleanse way, positive, yeah. a happy day. Because uh -huh. you know, like they say, yeah, when you're not happy or something's wrong, your lay might not come out the way you want it to be. Yeah. yeah. So you want to put your full aloha in. What do you think is the most important part of like Leila'i? If there's something someone could take away from it. Yeah, mostly patience. Yeah. So I think in 1990, my kumu, we flew to Hana Maui for the Kalo Festival. Uh -huh. So we had probably like 38 dancers. Wow. So I helped make five sets of lea'i this style for all 38 dancers wow yeah so it was a whole night no sleep Whew. yeah <laughs> must have been worth it though it was worth it yeah so since with this short mm -hmm. i usually start adding more okay. so what you're gonna do you're gonna put the tip right above that tea leaf up here oh, right up there. here Okay. Yeah. So what you're going to do, you're going to twist this into that. There you go. Then you're going to add three more strips on top of this. Okay. And you're going to do the same thing. Okay, that one's short. So you're going to add one more, same way how you added. You're going to put this on the top there. There you go. They're right on top, Sean. Right. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah, like that. And then you twist it. There you go. And you put three on top again. So we have a halau in Fairfield, California also mm -hmm. with the same kumu. Um, so what we do, my hula sisters, hula brothers on this side of the island, since California don't have fresh adornments, we will do all the gathering, the prepping, and they will be in charge of the costume making, 
So that's how we work together as yeah. one. Yeah. I love how in hula culture, mm -hmm. it's so, you know, you hear hula sister, mm -hmm. hula brother. Yeah, it's awesome, you know? It is. Everybody just starts thinking like mm -hmm. family. It's one thing about hula, yeah, you work together. Work together as one. Yeah. And when we go to competition, it's more for the fun mm. and what we're there for. It's not more like, oh, we want to win. Because yeah. what my Kumu taught us, we won from the first day we practice, the first day we gather our, you know, adornments. Yeah. Yeah. And the first day we did everything. That's the day that we won, you know? Yeah. So it's pretty, she was a pretty good Kumu, an awesome Kumu that anybody could ever ask for. Main thing you have two on the side, yeah. yeah. How are we looking? You're looking good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, are there only two styles? There's a lot of different styles. So, like today, we're doing this style, mm -hmm. the kupe'e. Um, we have the regular style, mm -hmm. which is a single strand of tea leaf that I have around my neck also from Yushan, mahalo. <laughs> and then now we have another lei that we use for our mede boys. It oh. almost looks like Miley. Yeah. So you're actually gonna, this one, you're gonna do the same thing like the coupe. -e. You're gonna cut the strips. Uh -huh. And with this one, how you make your regular tea leaf lei, every oh. twist, you're gonna add a strip and you're gonna make it to where it's long enough. For yeah. the person to wear so usually this style that you're making we use it for kahiko it's worn for kahiko only okay yeah hey you're doing good oh thank you i have a good teacher <laughs> hey, mahalo does your feet ever fall asleep while you're doing yeah this? yeah <laughs> that just happened to me usually i get cramps in my toes too yeah, I can imagine like, when you had to <laughs> stay up for hours that one oh, night, yeah. she said. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Even with our naopios, we had a halal at the school. Our mm -hmm. naopios, we entered them into the high school hula competition at Kamehameha Kapalama on Oahu. Oh, wow. We'll be up to like in the wee morning, finishing up all our keikis and the naopios lays, oh, get them ready. And that's all love, too. Yes. Yeah, that you guys do it and for. they really appreciated the keikis. Yeah. Yeah. Could imagine when the now feel if they win mm -hmm. oh man you guys must be stoked we're happy for them yeah? yeah but we always taught them you know like how our kumu taught us that you want from pra yeah, first day of me. practice first day of adornment making you know do you think that's because the knowledge is the price yes, yes. the knowledge and we told them that to keep it humble mm -hmm. you know where they come from and who they're representing okay i think you're done yeah yeah i finished that one okay. and then you're done so what you're gonna do you're gonna braid now yeah just braid it yeah you're gonna finish it up you're gonna braid it like how this one okay and you're gonna go until it's enough to tie okay also yeah okay there you go sean so what you do you're gonna tie a knot at that end okay there you go sean all right you want to make it to where it's not too tight but to where it won't fall off when you dance. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. And then you go, and then usually we stick the ball in between the like. There you go. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. And then we're gonna work on the long leg. We can. So what you're gonna do? You're gonna twirl. So every single twist, you're gonna oh, put I one see. strip. Okay. What's easy for me? I use my toes. Oh. <laughs> to hold and really and just keep tension uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you let me just put them on my toe you okay. can put them on your toe and i'll cut the strips i'm adding here right mm -hmm. and then i twist one more time yep and then i'm adding, adding again twist add Twist. And twist. Now, once you get in a rhythm, it's kind of like. It's, it's kind of fast, yeah. Keep going. If we were to continue, don't you want the length we want? We'd come to that finished 
yeah uh, leg. yeah like this one you're gonna make it to where it fits around the person or yeah. how long you want like this yeah. yeah or usually in hula we make it sidewards like this to where um the knot is here uh -huh. and we stick the knot in the loop thank you so much for teaching us how to make um, la i kupe'e and le la i. As we kind of close our time together, is there anything that you would like people to know about either this place, this practice? I just want to let everybody know I mahalo them, especially mahalo the aina, mahalo keokua, and I mahalo all of you for coming out today. And most of all, I want to mahalo my kumu, Raylene Lancaster, kawai aia, because she actually was the one who taught me how to do lai yeah. and this style. And I carry on her teachings. Mahalo Nui. Mahalo.